So this is me in 2018. Looking happy as Larry, but internally I was seething, having just got a clean sweep of rejections for graduate entry medicine. But this is me the year after, a year older and wiser, and having achieved four interviews for graduate entry medicine, and converted two of them into offers. What are you telling me? My name is Marius Hugh, and I am a final year graduate medical student at Southampton. In this video, we will address the popular question of whether or not graduate entry medicine in the UK is actually hard to get onto. Definitely when I was applying, I had the conception that this particular program, the graduate accelerated course, which is the four year course in the United Kingdom, I had this conception that it was incredibly hard to get onto. There's a lot of smoke and mirrors about it. There's just a few medical schools in the United Kingdom that actually offer it. And generally speaking, if there's a university that actually offers the course, there's only a few places on offer. Taking all this together, I was thinking there's only a few places at select medical schools. And of course, you've got the intellectual beasts coming from Oxbridge who are gonna be competing for these spots. So how the hell am I gonna get one of them? All of this, of course, is kind of true in a certain way. However, I would like to put forth to you that it might be slightly easier to get onto one of these courses than you think. So let us first start with some of the reasons people think getting onto graduate medicine is really hard. The first thing is that in the United Kingdom, there's probably only 12 or 13 places that offer graduate medicine. And in a year, in an academic cycle, you can only apply to four of them at a time. So this isn't something that's necessarily unique to graduate entry medicine. It's also the case for undergrad medicine. But I think the fact that you can only apply to a maximum of four places per year puts a lot of pressure on those applications because if you don't get it right and get yourself one of those spots that you've applied to, then you're gonna have to wait a whole extra year um, to reapply. You know, you're gonna be treading water for another eight, nine months trying to bolster your application, trying to strengthen your application to give yourself another good chance. Or, and I'm sure this has been the case for a lot of people, waiting that extra year just isn't feasible um, and they've had to give up on the dream of becoming a doctor and do something else. Yeah, I feel like the pressure is probably slightly higher for grads because, yeah, they probably want to just get going with their career. Um, probably all their friends have started working, earning money. Uh, the longer they wait, the further behind they probably will perceive that they'll be um, compared to their peers and their friends. So that is one reason I think it's hard. So the second reason I think graduate medicine has this reputation for being really, really difficult to get into is because of the huge competition ratios that you hear about. So if we were to examine this by looking at statistics and take the example of King's College London, for graduate entry medicine, 1,360 people applied. They interviewed 114 and gave out 27 offers. In the same year for the undergraduate medicine course, 2,908 people applied. They interviewed 983 and gave out 705 offers. We find that there is around a 1 in 50 chance of getting an offer for the graduate course and around a 1 in 4 chance of getting a spot on the undergraduate course. So yeah, these numbers are absolutely insane. You know, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if people do get dissuaded just by looking at those ratios. Just in terms of probability, the chances of getting one of those spots on your first go is probably, you know, really slim. So the third reason that graduate medicine is thought to be extremely difficult to get onto is because of the entrance exams. So if we were to look at, for example, the UCAT threshold scores for graduate entry medicine and compare them to, you know, the counterpart undergraduate course, we'd probably find that in every case, uh, the graduate course was significantly higher. So looking at Southampton and King's College London, on the undergraduate at Southampton, the score was 2680. And for the graduate course at the same university, the lowest score for a candidate was a full 250 points higher at 2930. Similarly, at King's College London, for the undergraduate course, the lowest score was 2,510. And for the graduate course in the same year at the same university, the score was 2,770. So all things considered, it does seem a bit ridiculous. Given data to show what most people probably already know about graduate medicine, um, that is extremely competitive to get into and that the UCAT score that you must achieve even to just get yourself to an interview is ridiculously high and much higher than the undergraduate course. Now though, I'm going to present to you a more optimistic look at the data and tell you about the realization that I've come to um, doing two years of this application cycle and you know, obviously also writing my graduate entry medicine book. So why isn't it actually hard to get onto graduate medicine in the UK? Well, the first point to make is that it is entirely predictable. Speaking in particular about the, the UCAT graduate medical schools, these five or so courses, which are the ones that I talk about in my book, 
your progression through the application process is actually entirely predictable. You actually delve into the statistics and clearly look at the credentials of the people that have been successful at that particular university before you. What you'll actually find is that there's a great deal of consistency um, between the people that they seem to be admitting. For example, the lowest UCAT score for someone that's made it to interview at Southampton Graduate Medicine has been exactly the same for the last couple of years. The students that have been successful in getting into Barts and the London in the last few years, there's been a great deal of consistency in terms of the fact that most of them have firsts. But just based on the statistical evidence of previous cohorts, I can infer that my 2-1 is probably not going to get me into Barts and the London. It's my view that previous cohort statistics um, hold a very strong predictive value. I personally didn't know this in my first year, so whilst I thought my application was pretty strong, you know, I had a 2-1 in biomedical sciences from Durham. I had a fair bit of work experience um, in healthcare settings. I was keen, I wanted to be a surgeon, but essentially I didn't do any preparation for the UCAT. Um, I got a mediocre score on that and then got four pre-interview rejections. Had I glanced at the lowest UCAT score for someone that got into the universities I was trying to apply to, before I sent my applications in, I would have known how futile it was. You might be thinking, well, the UCAT threshold is so high, how it's not predictable whether or not you're gonna get um, that high in the UCAT, how can I guarantee that I'm gonna get in the top 5%? To be fair, yeah, you can't guarantee it, but you can, I swear you can improve so much doing some deliberate practice on Medify, some timed questions, simulating the pressure that you're gonna be under in the exam, the timed pressure, your score will skyrocket in my opinion. To be honest, the bulk of the people that you're competing against are gonna be you know, people applying for the undergraduate course, they're gonna be school leavers. If you are there doing a couple months of deliberate practice under timed conditions and training your mind to get better, of course, surely you're gonna do better than these people. Go out there, start doing some practice now um, and start training your brain to get better at this test because you can get there. It's such an annoying test. You just have to play the game. In my opinion, I think it has no, you know, predictive value for how good a doctor you're gonna be. Um, it's just one of those things that you have to jump through the hoops um, you have to put in the time and get good at it. Otherwise, you're not gonna get a place at medical school. So another reason to be optimistic about your graduate medicine application is the fact that once you get to the interview stage, the competition ratios dramatically change and the odds aren't actually that bad. If we look at the candidates from 2021 who applied to Newcastle Graduate Medicine, the odds of getting to interview are about one in 10. So of all the people that ping off applications to Newcastle Graduate Medicine, um, there's a huge culling in the first instance. It's really difficult, or it's seemingly really difficult, just to get yourself from submitting that application on UCAS to going up to Newcastle for your Graduate Medicine interview. This is pretty much solely based on you getting over the UCAT threshold though in that particular year. So again, it's entirely predictable. So long as you've done what they say on their page in regards to your undergraduate degree, and you've got yourself 2-1 in like any subject. If you get over this UCAT threshold, you'll probably get to interview. But if we look at the number of interviewees at Newcastle Graduate Medicine and compare it to the number of people that actually achieve an offer there, you know, in 2021, they interviewed 102 people for the course and gave out 50 offers. And this is the case for pretty much all the graduate medical schools. So taken together, if we accept the idea that there's a great deal of consistency in the credentials held by candidates that are ultimately successful in different uh, academic cycles, if we put that together with the fact that the competition ratios change drastically from um, application to interview and then from interview to uh, acceptance, what we might start to realize is actually that I can get onto one of these courses if I prepare sufficiently for the UCAT. And once I get to the interview stage, uh, the odds of me actually getting into one of these courses is pretty good. So this is the realization I came to once I'd done a bit of research um, and I applied again for graduate medicine. So obviously whilst it looks pretty intense that on the thumbnail of this video I've got rejected you know six out of eight times actually the second year round once I'd got all my interviews I was pretty sure that you know at least one of them was gonna come off and I was gonna get a place somewhere you know I hope this doesn't come across insensitive to people that are you know doing loads and loads of these graduate medicine interviews and not getting anywhere and I'm just trying to make the point that statistically uh, the chances of getting from an interview to an offer um, are actually pretty good especially compared to um, your application to the interview stage. So that is it. I hope it was reasonably useful to hear this perspective. My advice would be prepare well at each stage, you know, be informed at each stage um, and, and just keep hustling and keep going and you'll get there eventually. Anyway, see you in the next one. Cheers.